Hi guys, this is Mihai. I'm the founder and CEO of Processio. And for today, I want to tell you some things about Processio. I want to tell you, first of all, what is Processio? So Processio, it's an enterprise grade automation technology. We're using no code, low code and full code to automate operations inside companies, right? And for that, I have prepared this uh, small presentation just to highlight several aspects about our technology. And the, the first aspect that I want to showcase is our three pillars. Our three pillars is integrate apps, automate workflows and process data. And we do that 10 times faster with 35 times lower costs than classic coding. Generally, without using technologies such as Processio, when you go to a company, you will find different systems which are interconnected amongst each other, point to point. And this is okay, but at, cer at a certain t uh, moment, you will have these integrations uh, become really hard to maintain, debug, and even harder to scale. But when you come with Processio and put Processio at the middle of those uh, software, you integrate Processio with each of those software and you do the connections inside Processio. So Processio is going to uh, actually act like a router inside your company, a router for applications, for data, and for processes. And this is the thing that I wanted to actually showcase today. Uh, you could do basic but also advanced chatbot functionalities. As the name says, Processio, right? I don't know if you see this, Processio. As the name says, we are actually doing processes. And for us, everything is a process. Even a chatbot, even a basic or an advanced one. It's a process, right? So you could do that with Processio and I'm going to showcase how you can do that. Now let's cut to the chase and actually go to Processio and showcase the basic bot uh, functionality. But before I showcase how is that possible in Processio, and by the way, this is Processio, I'm going to showcase the actual chatbot. This is an internal chat that we're using. It's called Driver, but you could use uh, Slack, you could use Microsoft Teams, you could use virtually any internal chat tool that you want. This particular chat is uh, chatbot is for internal purposes, this one that I'm showcasing to you, but you could basically build any chatbot. It doesn't matter. It's, it's absolutely doesn't matter, right? So now let's type something, right? Um, nothing happens. Why does not have, d doesn't uh, anything happens? Because obviously I'm not talking to the chatbot, right? So in order to talk to the chatbot, I need to mention the chatbot, right? So now let's see what he has to say. Obviously, as I'm expecting, I'm expecting to not understand what I'm asking of him, right? So let's see what he says. Obviously, I do not understand the message, okay? So, because it's normal, um, I have implemented in this chatbot, and by the way, when I say I have implemented it, this chatbot, it means that it took me four hours to actually build this chatbot. So, just four hours, right? I did it um, in the weekend, right? And part of it, I did it with my eight years um, boy, right? Okay, so let's continue with this. Integration now, um, because I don't know the commands, I have implemented a command to give me all the commands, right? So um, please tell me all the available commands, right? So now what I'm expecting is to actually get the possible commands for this um, chatbot. And as, it, uh, um, as I'm waiting, okay. So those are the possible commands, right? So I've implemented commands, I've tested that. I've implemented joke, we're going to test that. I've implemented uh, a way to get the age of my son. Yeah, Darius is my son. So let's try this. One second. Please tell me a joke. Now, as we wait for the joke, um, Processio now gets the message 
and it's going to query an API. So the joke that it's going to tell me, it's not actually something that uh, it invented, it's something that it gets from an API. It's a joke with uh, Chuck Norris. Cool, cool joke. Another command, let's test another command, right? So how old is Darius? And the way it's implemented is that the chatbot actually knows the birthday of my son and he's going to actually tell me the birth, uh, the age of my son. He's eight years old. Now let's ask him another thing like, tell me who is the best of the best. Uh, just misspelled. Cool. So the, the answer will not surprise you. It's true. Now let's see what he has to say. Obviously, Processor is the best. Now, I've tested all the commands that I've implemented right here, but I've also implemented some other commands, um, which I have not listed here because those are static commands, right? This is the basic bot functionality that I was talking about. Now let's see the more advanced bot functionality. Now, the thing that I've, uh, I've uh, uh, implemented in the advanced functionality, it's actually to understand, to try and understand the intent that you have. And to do that, I've integrated with a very interesting tool from Facebook, it's called WIT, right? So WIT, um, it's very easy to use. So all the thing that I've done, I've built for this chatbot. All together, it took me four hours, including the integration with width and everything that you see here and more, right? So let's test that, uh, that out. So what I've did is actually automate the sending of the intro email for customers. Uh, and I'm actually using that um, in production. Cool, so sorry, not team, but integration please send an intro to. Now, I need to know the name of the person to whom I'm sending this information. So in this case, I'm going to send it to Marianne. Marianne Voiku, which is the co-founder and deputy CEO of Processio. To Marianne at Marianne.Voiku at Processio.com. Cool. So let's see what happens. So basically what I'm expecting here to happen is the chatbot to detect the intent and the intent is to send an intro. And I'm also expecting to detect which is the name of the person to whom I'm sending the, in, uh, the um, uh, intro and also which is the email address to send the information to. But also some really cool stuff that I've done here is that I also prepare the chatbot to understand who's sending the request. So if I'm sending the request, he's going to send an email on my behalf. If somebody else is, um, else is sending this request to the chatbot, he's going to send the email from its behalf, right? So now as the intro has been sent, the chatbot confirms so that no, I know that the invitation has been sent. Now let's check the invitation. So this is my email. Obviously those are some tests that I've done. And let's see the email. Cool, so the email has arrived. It's for Marian Voiko, as I asked it. And also it contains my information and obviously a call to action. This is very important. And obviously a link to the presentation which I just did for you. How cool is that? Cool, I would say pretty cool. Now let's see the actual process and how this process look like, looks like and I'm going to walk you through the process so you get a feeling of how it e easy it is for you to build this. Even though this might seem complex, imagine this is a chatbot, right? So most of people actually imagine chatbots to be really complex and they are. But using Processio, it's really, 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 really easy to build anything, anything you've been uh, brewing of, and you can build it in Processio. 
So let's walk you through what this actually does. First of all, this is a process within Processio. Here you have all the predefined actions. I've used only predefined actions within this process, but also you have the option to create your custom action actions using code, right? So if you, you are a coder, you could do that. Now, this process is going to be triggered automatically by a webhook, the webhook that is generated by the chat uh, tool itself. So as I said, we're using River, but you could use anything else. Then we are getting, we're mapping information. So we're mapping the endpoint to whom we're going to reply because the chatbot needs to reply. So this is the endpoint where it sends the reply. I get the message received and also I keep an original copy of the message received because I need it in the process. Now here, this is a decisional where I decide if the message is intended for the bot or not, right? So if it mentions the bot, that means that the message is for the bot. If not, it's going to go to stop. Then we're going to trim the message to remove the white spaces before and after the message because who knows what you're typing there. And then I'm going to take a decision. Now the decision is going to be actually based on the commands that I've uh, predefined. And the way I predefine the commands is actually really easy, like command, right? Easy. And who's the best? The best. So if you write the best, he's going to reply. So you don't need to actually write everything that I've wrote. That's why it's, uh, it's flexible, right? Cool. So, for example, if you ask Joke, he's going to go through this branch and actually is going to call an API, right, with Chuck Norris jokes. And then after it goes through those routes, he's going to actually call back the chat app with the message that you want to send. And this is the new message that uh, you formed in order to reply to you. Now the cool, f so this is the, the basic functionality of the chatbot and that's it. So this is the basic uh, bot. So I could have stopped there, but I wanted, and this would have been the entire process, but I wanted to make it more complex, to, to, to take it more towards the chatbots, the, the advanced chatbots. And as I said, if it doesn't understand the command, it's going to go to this unknown where basically he will form the message. I do not understand the message that you're saying. And then it's going to continue and send that message to wit, right? So this is wit, which uh, I was telling you about. And wit is going to send me the intents that it detected within the message. It's going to count the intents and it's going to get the entities. So what, what are actually entities? So those are entities. So the this is the message, the intent, the detected intent is that I want to send an intro, right? So this is the intent and the entities are the name in this case and the email address in this case, right? So to whom is going to send the intro. And then if I have, I do not have any entities or I do not have any intent, right? So those are the conditions. The process is going to go towards this place where it's going to send a message that it doesn't understand the, the message and is going to stop. But if it has um, valid intent and valid entities, then it's going to move on and get the first intent. And then it's going to form some data regarding the sender. Right, so by default, the sender data is defined as mine, but if somebody else types um, the message, for example, if uh, in this case, Marian sends the message, is going to fill in his information, but if somebody else is doing that, is going to, to fill that person's information. If not, or if even if it has, is going to continue the process. And now if I understand the intent, if I know the intent, basically that means that it's a predefined intent and I have predefined two intents so far. And this is the intent that I've showcased. So if this is the intro intent, it's going to go through this route. It's going to get the email of the 
um, intro is going to get the full name of the person to whom I'm going to send the intro. It's going to generate the template of the email that I'm wanting to send, that I want to send. It can be an HTML, it can also be a PDF. If I want to attach a file, for example, to uh, that person and perhaps I want to make it personalized. And then I'm going to send that email to that person. I'm going to form the message to confirm that the intro mail has been sent, right? So basically the message that you've seen in the chat. And then I'm going to go through here, reply with the message and stop the process. And that's it. That is it. So even though it looks quite complex when you zoom out and see all those many lines and actions, as I've walked you through the process, you could see that's really, really, really simple. It's just logic. So you just need to know logic. You don't need to know software programming. You don't need to know a lot of things. So you just need to learn, know how to reason, right? To, 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 to make a good logic. And basically that's it, folks. So now what I want to showcase to you is what actually happens when I send a message in the chatbot and the, the in the chat and the chat is going to send a webhook and is going to run this process. So every time a process runs, it's creating what we call an instance. And you could monitor those instances and see the states of those instances, but also you could debug those instances. So you could see here what went in, right? So this is the message that I've sent, right? And what happens within the process. So those are variables inside the process which I have marked as output so I can monitor the state of those variables. But even cooler is what happens if you want to see what actually uh, took place within the process in a visual way. So this is what happens. You actually see the route through which this process went in order to execute. Right, so it went through here, through here, through here, through here, and basically it went through the route that I explained to you. Right, so um, let's go to see let's go to see another example of um, instance, and I'm going to showcase an instance where I gave a basic command, and I recognize the basic command by the number low number of actions. So let's go through this. I'm going just going to validate. Um, this is the available commands, right? So let's see what it did when I asked it to give me a joke. And this is what it did. It went through here. So this is how it got executed. So it's very easy for you to debug a process. Yeah. And this is just a very small thing that you could do using Processio. There are many aspects that you could resolve, you could automate, you could integrate. You could build software on top of Processio. You could use Processio as a backend for your software or as a middleware in which you are building your business logic. Processio, it's somewhere at the middle of BPMN, uh, ETL tools, enterprise service bus, BPM platforms, and IPaaS. And the way we are doing things is that we are moving towards application builder. Somewhere, somewhere along the line, hopefully by the end of this year, we plan to add um, front-end capabilities so users will be able to also build user interfaces using drag and drop inside Processio directly so they can build apps from one end to the other. And we've already done that. We'll, we've already begin to make steps in that direction with the document designer, which uh, I've used inside the process to generate the templates. And this is how it looks like, right? So just copy paste data documents from Word files or whatever, just put it here, just Define the input variables that you want to be filled within the uh, document and you just add it in the document. And now you are able to use this template within your processes. So this is just the first step moving us towards um, the application builder. And now, really, this is it. Thank you, guys. Thank you for your attention. Wish you all the best and hope to be in touch.